morning. But the Lord has been good to us. The Lord has blessed us and he has kept us. The songwriter said, down through the years, the Lord has been good, mighty good to us. So we come today to lift him up and to glorify him. Ah! 
We thank God for this opportunity again to be able to stand behind the sacred desk. We're thankful for each and every one of you that have come out to the household of faith. We thank God that the fact is that you kind of did not robbery, but the fact that God woke you up in the land of dying, gave you strength, and gave you opportunity Amen. to come into his house and to worship. Amen. We are always grateful to see you, grateful for the opportunity to come into the houses, the homes, to the rooms of those that are watching online. Amen. Amen. Again, let us be mindful. Uh, again, uh, we're asking our men uh, to contribute to the men's day offering. We're asking each man to give 100 or to do your very best. Again, uh, coming up in uh, June 27th is our church anniversary. And we ask that again, it is a dollar for every year. So we ask that you would give according to uh, the will of God, give according to the blessings that he has bestowed upon you. And then in October is our Women's Day, which is October 10th, second Sunday. So we're asking again that the women and men, everybody contribute towards these days that God has given us to celebrate uh, the functions of the church, amen? as well be mindful as we continue to be a blessing to those coming out of incarceration again every third and fourth sunday we collect donation of personal items uh, deodorant brushes combs toothpaste toothbrushes on and on and on anything that you know that can bless somebody to help them to get a new start after they've come out again we're collecting it and through our beloved brother and friend brother donald nichols we are getting it to the Union County Urban League. And so again, we want to be a blessing to them. Again, if somebody's coming on and this is the first time that you've heard me do it, go over to Matthew 25 and read a little bit and you'll find out that Jesus said himself that if you do it unto the least of them, you do it unto me. Amen? Amen. We want to continue as far as, as well blessing uh, those that are sick and shut in we want to remember those in prayer. We want to continue to bless them as we go down on our knees to ask the Lord to bless them and keep them. Again, uh, this morning, we want to keep in prayer. Uh, Brother uh, Brewster had a little incident, and so he's uh, getting that taken care of at Overlook, and we pray all will be well with him. As well, Sister Olga Cunningham from the uh, Summit Senior Housing we're asking that you keep her in prayer as well. And remember all of those that are sick and shut in on our list there. Again, those that we know and don't know deserve us to ask the Lord to bless them in a mighty way. Amen? Amen. We will, in the month of May, be returning to our web, uh, webinar series. And I explained last week we will be talking about a couple subject matters. One will be personal safety and the other will be insurance. So we want to tune in and listen to those that we will bring to you that are authorities in this particular field. Again, all of the other webinars that we have done uh, since the beginning of February are still online, Pilgrim Baptist uh, Church Facebook page, and I believe as well YouTube, so you can go on there and see them. If you miss them, we talk about uh, diabetes, we talk about hypertension, we talk about AFib, we talk about a number of different things, we talk about finances, uh, we talk about physical health, and we talk about the pandemic to some uh, degree, and talking about how it is uh, pandemics over time has affected uh, African Americans. So let me just say to you, all of our people that have come on have blessed us in the information that they have shared with yeah, us. Yeah. I ask that you go on and look at it. Let me say to you that as you hear over the announcements uh, of the TV through the governors and the multiple uh, federal government about the pandemic that we're dealing with, they're beginning to open up some things and beginning to broaden perspective. Let me just say to you, don't get so happy that you don't put on your mask. Don't get so happy that you don't wash your hands, don't use sanitizer, all of that stuff. 
I continue to urge you, those who have not received the vaccine, I am urging you to go and get it. I am saying it because one, it will help you, but then it will help those around you. The more people that we get vaccinated, the better off we're going to be. We can go through this uh, spring and summer, but this thing can return in the winter. So we want to be able right now, there is 100 million people who have been vaccinated fully, some 150 million that have received at least one dose. We're looking to get everybody as much of the American public that we can. We can see the things that are going on over in India. They, they are having mass uh, crematories right in the middle of their town. And so my brothers and my sisters, we need to be smart. We need to continue to do what is necessary to fight this pandemic. Do all the things that have been recommended for each and every one of us to do. We are looking for to have a good time, a safe time, and a healthy time during the spring and the summer. So please be mindful. Don't just go out there having large parties and all of that kind of stuff. Be smart about what you're going to do. Don't get so crazy that you think that you're immune to this because I can take you over to the cemeteries and show you many of them that thought that they were immune and yet they have been called for labor to report. Let us be mindful of all of the information given to us, process it, use it to the, to the wisdom and the knowledge that God gives us and blesses us. Amen? How many know God is great? And he's worthy to be. And then let me say one more time. How many know he's worthy to be? Pray. How many want to give him the highest praise? How many know that if it was not for the Lord, that you would not have made it? Amen? Now, let me just say this before I forget. I got so many things rattling around in the body up here. Um, is there any March birthdays? We missed March, so let me just ask any March birthdays. Brother LeVon, are there any April birthdays? Amen. We got one, we got two, and May birthdays. We got a couple coming on. Brother Lewis, tomorrow? Ross, tomorrow? Amen. 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 Come on, let's just thank God by putting our hands together for the birthdays that we celebrate. Connie's got a birthday coming up. Amen. Connie's going to be 23 again. Again. Brother Allen, we're so grateful. We thank God for you. Amen. There's, 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 there's something still to Brother Admiral. I happen to be coming up here, dropping off some of the disinfectant. And, and let me just say to those out there, before people enter the church on Sunday morning, this church is fully Every disinfected. Sunday. Every Sunday. When these people leave the church, it's fully disinfected. I was up here. And Brother Alper has it so ingrained in him that this place means so much. But Alper just rolled up through the parking lot, looked at everything, made sure everything was okay. I don't know if you saw me the other day when I was here, but I saw you. And I thank God that you do that. Because it's important for us to keep a watch on what God gives us. And it's important that we make sure that everything stays in order. So I thank you for all that you still do, even though you are married. God's blessing you in a mighty way. Amen. And we're thankful today. My 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 right hand, my my partner in crime is here today, Reverend Lord Dean. And so we're grateful today to have her here with us. We are grateful. You just don't know how happy Pastor is inside. Because I can now know that if I gotta just take a little breath, Reverend Dean is back in the saddle to, to mount up and to do it after you come. Amen. We missed you and we thank God for protecting you and keeping you yes. through yes. all that has transpired. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's stand to our feet. The word of the Lord today is coming from the book of Acts. We're going to chapter one. 
chapter 1, starting at verse 1 to verse 4. The book of Acts. Book of Acts, chapter 1. Somebody said, when are you going to leave there? <laughs> as soon as the Lord gave me permission, I will leave there. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Let's start in verse 1. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up after that. He, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. Amen. 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 Thus bless the reading of the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's praying time, my brothers and sisters. That's a power that God gives unto us to be able to pray through the Spirit. That when we pray, the Holy Spirit gathers up our prayer, brings it on its wings, and puts it at the feet of Christ. Christ then gathers it up, sorts it out, molds it, shapes it, puts it into a form, and then pleads our case unto God. My brothers and my sisters, we all have the ability to pray. We all have the ability to go to God in prayer. Prayer is the sincere thoughts and needs of those that come to Him. If we realize that He'll meet all of our needs, sometimes our needs are mixed into our wants. And so my brothers and sisters, if we come knowing that God is able to do all things exceedingly and abundantly well, then we know that there is no failure in God. As the choir begins to sing this morning and lead us in song, as we extend the opportunity for Deacon Ronald Allen to come and lead us this morning in to pray. Pray that God's ultimate power would touch us and move us, gather us in a place that is pleasing in His sight. But we know that you are a God who will increase all our territory right now, Lord God. 
we know that all we have to do is believe on you. And all yes, things yes. that we need will be all provided. All so all we thank you so much thank right you. now. Yeah. And I'm asking a special prayer for the church right now, Father God. Yeah. And not just Pilgrim, but all churches that are open in your hand. Whether they be casting from their, their dining rooms or their kitchens, whether they are casting from the church, whether they are open there are open there are a lot of people are. I'm asking a special prayer for all the churches right now. Yeah. And we have lost our way somewhere in this pandemic. Yeah. We are forgetting what it means to be true Christians. Yeah. We are not allowing your work to be done. We are so worried about doing business in the church instead of the business of the church right now. We're so worried about what's going on on the street, Lord, right, right. we're not helping those people who are on the street. Yeah. We're so busy judging the young man and young woman who comes to the church, the problem to lay themselves at the altar and worry about judging them than helping them right now. Yeah. Father God, we need to get a correction right now. I'm asking you to change the yeah. course that we are on right now. Yeah. Order our steps right now, Father yeah. God, because we are failing as Christians. Yeah. Right now, people are very themselves and mind more and more God. The word about what Biden is saying about how he wants to change gun laws. No gun can solve the problems that are going on right now. No gun is going to change our poverty. No gun is going to change the sickness. No gun is going to change the inequalities that are going on right now in this world. For only you can do that, Father. So we as Christians need to go out and start preaching the word into a dying world. There are so many people out there that are looking for answers. They're looking for somebody to come and help them right now. So we are asking that you strengthen the right church now, and right now. God. Take us and clean us up. We are laying ourselves here at the altar right now as a living yeah, sacrifice. Yeah. Empty all the things that are inside of us right now. Yeah. Clean us out of all things that are not right. Yeah. Clean us that are acceptable in your eyes. And change us who we might be. Father God, let the meditations of our heart, the words of our mouth, and the actions in our step be acceptable in your sight. Yes, that we Lord. might leave this place and change a dying world. Yeah. Father God, somebody right now is so busy worried about their next door neighbor. Yeah. They're not praying for the neighbor, but they're worried about what they're going to do with them. Somebody's worried about the police officer driving behind them right now, Father yeah. God. That police officer's worried about the person in front of them right yeah. now. We're not praying for each other. We're not helping each other anymore. We need to become your people right now, Father God. Lay us out on the battlefield. Stand forward, yeah. Lord of God, that we might fight for your name. Yeah. People are out there blaspheming the church right now. Yeah. People are out there blaspheming your name right now. Yeah. Lord upon false religions and false gods. We have never done anything for them, but yet your grace and mercy is what yeah. left us whole this yeah. entire time. Your grace and mercy saw us through a year of pandemic. All the dogs and the water hoses and all your day. You have seen us here, but somehow your people, your chosen people, are still straying away from you. We are looking for them to learn, to learn how to quiet themselves, get rid of the distractions that we might listen to that spiritual voice. You are calling out to your people right now. And somebody has to answer and say, Here I am. Send me. We as the people need to say, Here I am. Send me, but we are so busy being lost. And all they're doing is pushing their own agenda. We need to be about God's agenda right now, Father God. So quiet all those voices. I don't care what CNN has to say. Or Blitz, you can't teach me anything. Cheyenne, you can't teach me anything. Biden, you can't teach me anything. But your word is where we stand right now, Father God. We sit here presenting ourselves as living sacrifices. So we ask that you clean us up. Give us a new heart. Give us a new creatures. And those creatures that go out and save this world. For we know that you are casting all these things down upon us. The trumpet is being blown right now. The drums are being beaten right now. We are in a war right now. So we ask that you strengthen us as a people. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen, amen, amen. Come on and thank God for the prayer. Thank God for the song. And thank God for those that pray and sing. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to ask the choir to come back and song. And after they do, we're coming back for the word this morning. Amen.
Amen? We're going to look at that last verse. Verse 4 of the first chapter. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. But wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. This morning, for a few moments, I want to talk about the endowment of God. The endowment of God. We have endeavored over these now beginning five months to talk about investing in God. And my brothers and my sisters, one of the things that I've said to you over and over again is that God first invested in us. That God, through all that he did, showed us that he is willing to invest in us. We serve an awesome God. He keeps on blessing us in such a way that no one or nothing else could ever do for us in our life. He, he continues to endow us with his promise even when we don't deserve it. Come on now. Blessing after blessing from one degree of grace and one degree of mercy to the next degree of grace and the next degree of mercy. Day after day without ceasing. If we were ever to stop and to think truly how good God has been to us. We, we've been through some ups and we've been through some downs where we're, we're making He's uh, transgressing us through a pandemic and when you think and you look about all of those people that have caught this virus and passed away and yet he blessed you again. He gave you grace and mercy. You woke up this morning and, and you were still full of grace and mercy. Somebody ought to just say we serve an awesome God. I want to tell you that when God called together the conference of himself, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and, and made us after his image and blew the breath of life into us, a non-existing thing, God in us. Let me tell you that, that when you read that, that, that God took that was that which was the dust of the earth. He, he pulled it together. He, he formulated what was dust. I, I told you before that dust seems to accumulate on our cars. Uh, it accumulates on our shelves. It accumulates on our Bibles. It accumulates and yet the, the thing of it is that we cannot collect the dust and put it together to do what God did. When we stop and think about how God formulated who we are, something inside of us ought to think how powerful God is. That when, if you've ever been in a situation whether you had cancer or you had some other problem, and yet doctors didn't know what to do, and yet you're still alive today. I wish I could get somebody to say, thank God for what he's done for me. Well, when we think about that, we must think about how God has endowed us with whom we are through his image. This is an overwhelming power all by itself. The fact that God could light into who you are and who you're supposed to be is an overwhelming thing. To think that what he did to Adam is still reflection of his power and his promise. Right. Let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters. Don't, don't take life for granted. When you get up in the morning and you realize that God has blessed you, the first thing you ought to do is say, thank you, Lord, for yet another day's journey. You ought to say, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to go through my sleep and to wake up in the land of God. That is the promise and the power of God. Just to think about that kind of endowment in the lives of humans being 
should make every breath, uh, every breathing person to thank God for their blessings. Sometimes we don't realize that when God doesn't do something for us, that it's still a blessing. Because God has endowed us with everything we need to overcome whatever problem or situation. The, the Bible tells us that the lily even knows to look up to the Lord, which cometh its blessing of the sun and the rain. We that were made in his image, can I tell you that my brothers and my sisters, every waking moment, we ought to be looking up to our maker and thanking him for all that he has done. Some, some believe that the birds early in the morning, they're singing because they are grateful for the blessing of being watched over by God and providing them with food to eat. And if the truth be told, we ought to be grateful for the endowment of God that he has given us. Every day life comes to us not because you wake up, not because of your money, not because of your power, not because of your title, but it comes to you out of the goodness and the grace and mercy of God. It's an endowment when you stop and you think about it. That he gives us life. He gives us the ability to have life and to have it more abundantly. Even our sinful nature, God still endowed us with giving us his only begotten son. The, the first thing is that he makes us in his own image. The second thing is that God was so willing that he endowed us with his only begotten son. When nothing else could change the course of sin that man had endowed itself in, God was willing to endow us with a Savior that was willing to endow men with the will and the way of God. You think about it, that in the fact of what Jesus did for us, nobody else could ever have done. You think about it. Your mother may have wanted your sins to be wiped away, but only Jesus could wash them away. Oh, let me tell you, the preacher may have preached Sunday after Sunday talking about he's able to do it, but it wasn't until you came yielding yourself unto him that Jesus made a way out of nowhere for you. Now, I got somebody in here today that knows that in the midst of it, that there's nobody like Jesus, nobody that could have saved you, nobody that could have changed you, nobody that could have picked you up from your muck and your mire, set you on a solid ground, nobody that in the midst of it, when tears and sorrow come, nobody like Jesus could empower you, change your sorrow into joy, move your tears, and do it. I need to know today, are there anybody here that thank God for the endowment of Jesus in your life? Jesus, willing by the promise and the power of God to walk among sinful people, to spread the word of God in spite of the demonic will to kill him, to withhold the promise and the power of God from us. Let me say that one more time willing by the promise and the power of God to walk among sinful people. Let me just say to you, I know that there's some church folk. They won't talk to people if they're not church folk. They won't socialize. They won't come around. They'll turn their nose up. They'll walk away. They'll talk about them. But think about what Jesus did because he was endowed by God. He walked among the sinful people. He walked among them and never turned his nose up at them. He never talked about them, but he talked about the word of God to them. There are some times when we just won't do anything because we're afraid of what somebody will say about us. But the Bible says that God sent them into the world which was full of sin to save man from the sinful nature. It was by God that he came. It was by God that he did God's will. It was by God that he did God's promise. And it's by God that he gave us the power to do what it is in our life. It is in the midst of the demonic will to kill him. He did not stop. He did not slip. He did not slide. But he held on to the promise and the power that God gave him to spread the word to tell men, women, boys, and girls to the utmost.
Pentecost, Jesus said to tell them if they came and confessed with their mouth, believed in their heart, that they could be saved. While we spend so much time talking about each other, we ought to be walking amongst one another, spreading the word of God. Despite whatever may come our way, we ought to be willing to be endowed and spread the promise and the power of God. Think about how powerful the promise of God is when you see the lame walk. Think about how powerful and how endowed it is when you see the blind see again. Think how powerful and how endowed it is that when Jesus came, the dead lived again. Think about how powerful and how endowed it is that we have a Savior like Jesus that he took and fed the hungry. Think about it, that in the midst of it, how powerful it is, the Savior we serve, that he was able to take and quench the thirst of those that were thirsty. Think how powerful and how endowed he was, that he was able to take and break the shackles and set men, women, boys, and girls free. Think how powerful and how endowed he was that in the midst of it, that he could walk up and talk to a sinful person and tell them that your sins are forgiven. All somebody ought to say thank you right now that in the midst of it, I don't know about you, but I once was blind, but because of Jesus and his empowerment, I can see again. Oh, yes, I was lame and couldn't walk right. But because of Jesus, I'm walking on the straight and narrow. I don't know about you. I was hungry. I was thirsty. But he gave me food that no man could ever get. Gave me water that will take all of my thirst away. But most of all, this is what I'm going to shout about. He saved me from my sin. He washed me whiter than snow. He made me whole again. Have I got some church people in here? Have I got some God lovers in here that know how powerful that I could list today that he did back then and that the power is still working today and that the endowment of God is still good today. Jesus, in his final instructions to the disciples, Jesus had nothing else for the disciples to do other than to wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit. He said that the promise of the Father would come on them that they would be endowed with something that they never had before. Jesus knew that they really couldn't do nothing effective for the kingdom of God until the Spirit came on them. My brothers and my sisters, we can come to this place every Sunday, but we can't do nothing until the power of the Holy Spirit pours down on us and pours itself inside of us. All we can sing a song but we don't sing to the glory of God. We can read some words calling and preaching, but we can't preach until the Holy Spirit comes. We can't give God glory until the Holy Spirit comes. We can't do nothing. We can't be effective in the world. We can't feed the hungry. We can't clothe the naked. We can't look about those in jail until the Holy Spirit comes. He tells the disciples, you got to wait until the power of God comes down. Listen, there are some times in our lives when there is nothing else that we can do but wait. There's nothing else to do but wait. Waiting means it's worth waiting for. It means in order to receive yeah, to receive what God has promised, you have to wait on it. It means that you can't create it yourself. You can't buy it, you can't steal it, and you can't get it any way else. You must wait until the power of the Father, the promise of the Father, the endowment of the Father will fall upon you. I tell you, my brothers and my sisters, there are too many people leaving the church because they're looking for something else. He told the disciples, stay right here in Jerusalem. Stay in the place where I died for you. Stay right there and watch will God, what God will do. Sometimes we may be in the lion.
is dead. But we got to wait on the Lord. Or sometimes we may be directly in the fire of furnace. We got to wait on the Lord. Sometimes we got to give up our last meal so that somebody else might have it. But we got to wait on the Lord. Or that's why the Bible says, be of good courage. Wait on the Lord. We got to know that sometimes he'll put us in a situation that don't look good, don't look right, but I, I got a witness right now, if you wait on the Lord, he will show up. Sometimes, sometimes it's a test for you to see whether you're willing to wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Jesus tells them, to wait in a commandment for them not to depart from Jerusalem. Here's a very important instruction. Not to leave the church no matter the suffering that may occur. Let me say it one more time. It is important not to leave the church no matter the suffering that occurs. Somebody look at your cross eye, get on your knees and pray for them. Somebody says a disparaging word, lift them up to the Lord. Sometimes, I wish I had help this morning, sometimes things don't go the way you want, stop leaving the church. Stand on the solid rock. Stand on the solid ground. Stand where God stood. Stand where Jesus stood. Stand where Moses stood. Stand where Abraham stood. Stand where Isaac stood. Stand where all the prophets stood. Just stand where Jesus is, and Jesus will get you through. It is. It is in the church. Or it is being the church. It's where you will receive the promise. Remember, it is the church that Jesus gave his life for. When we are the church, then therefore we will receive the endowment of God. Yes, somebody will tell you, I don't have to go to that building to get Jesus. But it's not the building that they're going to. It's the church that they're going to. It's those that are baptized believers. It's those that are chosen by him. It's those that heard the call, here am I, send me. It's all of those things right there. Listen, even if this building burns down, we can move across the street to the rec center and we can still have church. Even if we can't go across the street to the rec center, we can go out in the parking lot. Have I got a witness? And have church. It doesn't matter where we are. When you are the church, you are endowed of the Spirit of God. Wherever you are, you ought to have church. When you get up in the morning, you ought to have church. If you get to the grocery store, you ought to have church. If you get to the hospital, you ought to have church. If you're at the cemetery, you ought to have church. Listen. It is by the Holy Spirit which God uses in that which is called the Trinity. Third point. First point was God created us in our image. Second point was God sent his only begotten Son to save us. The third part of the Trinity is the Holy Spirit. It is by the Holy Spirit that God uses us to get to where we need to be. Jesus said, I'm going away. I'm leaving y'all, but I'm not leaving you comfortless. He said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit that in the midst of it, that no matter your situation, Raj, you got a situation? Mm -hmm. Mike, you got a situation? Brother, you got one? Y'all out there, you got one? You see, we, we got to be endowed by the Spirit. Because that's why trouble don't last for weapons. Amen. That's why he's a bridge over trouble water. That's why he's food when you're hungry water, when you're the friend to the friend. He's, he's medicine when you need. He's everything. He's that. That this coming and this filling and 
this empowerment of the Holy Spirit is called the promise of the Father. It shows that we should wait for it with eager anticipation. I remember as a little boy, we go down south. And my grandfather's church back then was really wood sized. No air conditioning, barely electricity. And if you didn't get there early enough, they raised the windows up so that you could pull. Some people came in their wagons and pulled up next to the window. But, but there was an anticipation that we're going into the house of worship. We're, we're going in and something is going to happen. Something that's on the outside is going to work on the inside. There's an anticipation that, that when we get into this place, that something is going to fall on us. That that is going to be a spirit that, that when we see each other next week, we're going to say, well, not so church last week. Yeah, amen. You remember when you, when you used to come to church and the spirit ran from heart. Y'all need to help me now. Amen. Am I the only one that looks for that spirit every 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 time I get a, every time I get together with somebody that knows the spirit? Every time I think about the goodness of the Lord, I think about what He's done, where He's brought me from. I think about food on my table, clothes on my back, helping me raise my children. What He's done for me, I'm anticipating. I'm anticipating a spirit. I'm anticipating that something that didn't happen last week is going to happen this week. Something, he's going to pour something on me that's going to make me run and see what he is. He's going to do something to make me hold up the blood stained banner. He's going to make me do something to sing to his glory. He's going to make me do something to pray that will change the heart. He's going to make me preach. Anticipation that something is going to happen. It shows that there is reliability. The Father would never promise something that He could not fulfill. It shows the promise belongs to all of His children. Since it comes from God the Father, it shows that it must be received by faith. Yeah, you can't get that spirit unless you got the faith in God. As it is that God promises throughout the word that he's going to pour out himself on us. The promise is that, that we will receive an anointing. The promise of the Father now becomes also the promise of the Son. That what God did in the Old Testament, He magnified it in the New Testament. That when He walked among us and He taught among us, that when He performed miracles among us, that God showed us His endowment of His power. That you should and you shall uh, be baptized uh, with the Holy Spirit. Uh, that the idea is uh, that something uh, will engulf us uh, and something uh, will renew us. Uh, something uh, will emerge us uh, and something uh, will cover all uh, of our sins. Uh, John with the water. But Jesus says that you're going to be immersed in the Holy Spirit. It's more, it's more than just coming in to God's house, but it's more of what God will do when he pours it out on you. 
my soul to breathe. For it was great that I called my falling soul. Yeah. 
the power. Yes, he did. And he said, this is my blood that has been shed for you. As often as you drink of this cup, do this in remembrance of me. Let us do likewise. Amen. Go in peace.